Welcome to a tutorial on Twine 2.0. Now, if you've used previous versions of Twine, 1.3.5 or 1.4.2, Twine 2.0 is going to look a little different to you. Instead of being a program from Windows or Mac OS X or Linux, it's now a website, which means it can run anywhere websites can in a browser. If you have a tablet, you can create something on Twine now. If you have a mobile phone, you can create something on Twine. Basically, anything that has a browser or can run a website, you can now create Twine on that device. So to start, we're going to follow the, the instructions right at the top of the screen here. We're going to create a new story. So on the right-hand side, there is a green story button. I'm going to give our story a name here. The Two Doors. And then we click Add. So if you've used previous versions of Twine, this is going to look a little familiar to you. We have passages, and now we have them on a blue grid background here. Unlike previous versions of Twine, however, Twine 2.0 does not create, by default, a start passage. That is, that special unique passage called start no longer exists. In previous versions of Twine, this was what all stories started with. There was a start passage that was the very beginning. In Twine 2.0, there are just passages. And we can change any one passage to be the starting point of a story. So right now we have Untitled Passage. If we put the mouse over top of it, we see we have four options here. We can delete it. We can edit. We can start the story right there from a test view. Or we have this rocket ship icon. We can set it as a starting point. So I'm going to do that now. So now Untitled Passage is the starting point. I'm going to double click. I'm going to change Untitled Passage to something a little more useful here. The beginning. Now I'm going to enter some body text. Once upon a time, there were two doors. The red door and the blue door. Now, if you've used previous versions of Twine, you know what I've just done here, which is I've created two links to the passages red door and blue door. Now, if you've never used Twine before, you create links, that is, connections between passages, by putting two opening brackets and two closing brackets around a word or a set of phrases to link those words to another passage of that exact name. In this case, red door and blue door. Now, if you've used previous versions of Twine, it's a phrase I'm going to say quite a lot here. You'll know that you would have had to create the passages red door and blue door. However, in Twine 2.0, if the passages red door and blue door, or whatever you put within those brackets, does not already exist, Twine 2.0 will then create those passages for you. As we see here, the beginning is now linked to the passages red door and blue door. Well, that's all well and good. But what does this look like in practice? I mean, we, ha we now have three passages. How would this play? Well, down here in the lower right-hand corner, we can play the story from the starting point, in this case, the beginning. So it's opened a new tab, and we see once upon a time there were two doors, the red door and the blue door. Click on Red Door, and it sends us to the passage Red Door. Go back, click on Blue Door, and it sends us to the passage Blue Door. Very straightforward. Now I'm going to close this tab and go back to the Twine interface here. I'm going to open the beginning and edit mode. Now to change the style of text in Twine 2.0, gotten a little bit different than the previous versions. 
to emphasize something, let me just put it in italics, I can put a star around a word or phrase or some selection of text. When I play it, you see it's italicized. If I want to give a greater emphasis, if I want to bold it, include two stars. And now the text is bold. Now, what's new in Twine 2.0 is that HTML elements are no longer awkward and weird. It's no longer as complicated to include them as it was in previous Twine versions. Now we can just put them in any passage that we want. Instead of using the two stars or a single star, I can include the HTML element equivalent. In this case, to emphasize some text, em tag. Or for a greater emphasis, a stronger one, in this case bold, I can use strong. And Twine 2.0 knows what I mean and handles it, handles the HTML elements perfectly fine. Now, what if I wanted to change the text of a link within a passage without also changing the name of another passage? For example, in the beginning here, I have red door and I have blue door. What if I didn't want the link to say red door or blue door, but I wanted the link to remain connected to, that is linked to, the passages red door and blue door? How would I do that? Well, in Twine 2.0, there's a slightly new syntax of arrows, less than sign, and then a hyphen. the hyphen and the greater than sign. In each case here, note that the text points towards the passage name. It's still red door and blue door, but the text that will go within this link that will replace it always points towards the passage name. And we have the one door and the other door. One door, this text, points towards red door. Other door points towards blue door. Well, that's fine too, but what if we wanted to use a macro? How would we do that in Twine 2.0? Well, it's gotten a little bit simpler, in fact. Macros now are invoked using parenthetical expressing, expressions that is some text within parentheses. So for example, we wanted to set a variable and then remember entwine variables start with the dollar sign. If we wanted to set key to the value rusty, the string rusty, we would set it off right here. Open parentheses, the macro, the instruction, and then close parentheses, set key to Rusty. Well, what if we wanted to know what the value of the variable key was in another passage? How would we do that? Well, in previous versions of Twine, it got a little bit complicated. In Twine 2.0, however, it's getting very easy. Now we just include the variable name. Just like this. And we can tell it's a variable name because it starts with a dollar sign. So in the beginning, we're setting the variable key to the string rusty. And then in red door, we're rendering the variable key to its value. The key is rusty. Well, that's fine, too, because in previous versions of Twine, you could do this, and the syntax has just changed a little bit. So what's new in Twine 2.0? Well, Twine 2.0 has something called hooks, which are new ways of changing things, unlike macros. 
the set macro is what we previously used here to set a value. In 22.0, instead of creating a link to a passage, I can just create a single link by using single brackets. In this case, desk. I can create a hook to the command click. That is, when a click happens to something, do something else. And I'm going to give it a tag name. This is a way of saying, for this click event, do some other thing. I'm going to call it CL1, close parentheses. I'm going to open brackets. then close brackets. To use this hook, I use a less than sign, then the tag name without the question mark this time, and then the pipe signal to indicate this is for this. In practice, We see there is a desk. When we click on desk, the click hook is invoked, and it then renders the text that was in the bracket. Desk, nothing here. There is also another hook, instead of click, called replace. And luckily, 22.0 has combined the two as click replace. Now, when I invoke the hook CL1, notice how it's named here, it will click replace. That is, when I click on this link, it will replace the text desk with desk question mark, nothing here. Now, what if we've made our story, and it's done, and we want to be able to download it? Well, how do we do that? Well, down here is the additional menu options. We can add JavaScript. We can change story style sheets if we want to change the CSS. We can change the format. We can rename it. We can make the stories snap to grid. Or we can publish the file. And then we do we now have an HTML version to share with people. Once upon a time, there were two doors. And there's a desk, and there's nothing there. And the key is rusty in the red door. Well, there you have it. It's not a very exciting story, but it should help you get started with making things in Twine 2.0. A uh, new version for showing things off on the web in Twine. Thanks for watching.